All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Comics Class, take two. Um, we just had a little uh, power mishap in the house. Um, but uh, my name is Brandon Pallas. Uh, I'm here to teach you everything I know about drawing comics. Um, and uh, I'll just make it quick since we already went through this for you guys who are on here live. Uh, we got some changes coming to Comics Class. We will uh, no longer be doing the weekly uh, live class. We will be moving to just um, regular old YouTube videos. Um, I just feel like that is going to work better going forward. It'll give me more flexibility. We won't have these hour and 15 minute videos every week. Um, but those of you who've been here, um, attending the class, drawing along everything, I really, I want you to know, I appreciate you. Um, definitely helped me, uh, get started. Um, so I really appreciate all that. And, uh, going forward, we will be Oh, what's that? Uh oh. Oh, okay. Um, all right. My Discord is restarting for some reason. Apparently, it's still, uh, still working. So I'll just keep going. Um, but in any case, uh, yeah. So that's going to be the the change going forward. I'll just be recording regular old videos, um, and hopefully that will work better. Give me more flexibility with when I record, uh, and um all that. But anyway, uh, so now we're going to go ahead and finish up. Oh, I just realized that. Can you guys see my stream? Yeah. Okay. Very strange because yeah, my discord looks like it's loading, but all right. If you guys see it, um, see this moving around. Yes, I did. Thank, thank you, Kana. You guys see this moving. Okay. Okay, cool. We're good then. All right. So, um, Today we're going to finish up our uh, perspective series with uh, kind of just a whole bunch of perspective tricks. You know, we already went over the basics of the horizon line, um, 1.2.3 point linear perspective. Uh, so we have the basics. We understand fundamentally how perspective works. But um, going forward today, we're going to uh, get into a bunch of um, little tricks and techniques and stuff that you can use to kind of build more uh, complex uh, perspective situations and um, yeah, just, just help you out. So we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and like we always do, do some, uh, do some warm ups. So let's just start with some basic C curves. And I'm just gonna just do a bunch of these, go the other direction. Gonna go up, we're gonna go down, and we'll keep this short because this isn't super relevant to what we're doing today, but I do like to make sure we're doing this. I think it's a very valuable uh, exercise. All right, uh, now let's do some S-curves. Same deal, just uh, vary the direction, go up, go down, go left, go right, go horizontally rather than vertically. You can uh, stretch them out real long. You can keep them kind of short and tight. You can have tight on one end and long on the other. Up to you, all of this. Practice will just uh, improve your hand, uh, give you uh, a better grasp of line, um, and it'll just generally be good for you. Alrighty, um, that ought to do. Just a quick, quick little exercise there. So now let's go ahead and do some sort of perspective warm ups and. Um, Let's start by making a point and then drawing lines converging toward that point. You can do straight lines, relatively straight, or, uh, or I should say and, um, you can do curving lines, kind of radiating out from or, or toward that point.
you can do S curves. And we can also, uh, and I, I feel like this is very valuable for, for developing a sense of perspective, we can just do kind of an imaginary point. So in, instead of actually drawing a point there, we'll just leave it blank and we will converge all our lines toward a point that we just kind of hold in our head. And uh, if you can start to get good at this, it'll give you a big leg up in doing uh, perspective just kind of freehand without having to... Um, without having to really set it up and, and create your vanishing points and everything. I, I think that's a valuable skill. Um, so just do a few more of these. And this is a good, um, a good kind of design skill to have anyway, even if it's not perspective, like the, just the ability to, uh, to relate a series of lines to a, a point that they kind of converge on. Um, there are a lot of reasons you might want to do this uh, in your drawings. Um, and we'll cover that when we get to design principles later on. Um, there's a lot of little tricks that you can use to just make your, your stuff look look better just in a, in a like raw design kind of sense. Um, so that's probably good for now. Um, Let's move on and do some, uh, just some freehand uh, cubes in perspective. And my Discord, I guess my Discord's gonna be, uh, gonna be down today apparently. Uh, still here? Everybody still hear me? Okay, good. Yeah, it's, it's still doing that little uh, spinning Discord logo. Uh, so I'm probably not gonna be you know, if anybody's posting in the chat, I probably won't see it. Um, if someone does post in the chat uh, and anyone wants to give me a heads up, let me know what they said. Um, that would be helpful. Um, I won't be able to look at your uh, your drawing along, unfortunately, but I'm sure you guys are doing a great job. One thing I want to tell you about uh, about perspective, about drawing. Um, cubes and whatnot in general, is that most people most of the time have a tendency to extend it too far back. Um, if I drew a cube like this, uh, this would actually definitely be like a long rectangle. Um, when, when stuff goes back, you know, you know, recedes back into the distance, um, it tends to actually be a little shorter than we would think. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, one exercise I used to do when I was really studying perspective was um, I would get a die from like a Monopoly game or something, just a plain old six-sided cube die, um, and just put it down and just draw it. Um, I mean, not the dots and everything, but just draw that cube, you know. Uh, I felt that it was valuable to just, you know, it doesn't have to be a die, but any any kind of a cube. Um I felt that it was valuable to develop, in addition to the kind of technical skills of um, linear perspective, uh, to also develop just a, a strong sense of what a cube looks like. So it's just like life drawing of a cube. And then, you know, really trying to, uh, to kind of zero in on, on what a cube looks like from different angles, how how far back it does, uh, it's a bad one. Um, how far back it kind of does project, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think that's a worthwhile exercise. You know, I probably drew a thousand of those. Um, and it's fine cause they take, you know, it takes a couple of seconds, but just having that, uh, that visual, um, model, you know, like a, a cube is very simple. It doesn't seem like you would need uh, a model, but it, it does help to just develop your sense of, um, of what a cube looks like in perspective, um, proportionally. Uh, and cubes are really important for perspective because they're symmetrical. You know, we, they, they're, they're the same distance back as they are like wide. 
Um, so they can be used to kind of measure a lot of things and it's just a good skill to have. So, um, all right, we're going to go ahead and move on into the meat of the lesson. Um, so I'm going to start by showing you guys uh, the probably the most important single like technique for for working with perspective outside of just your your basic uh, horizon line uh, vanishing point stuff. Um, and today, because we're going to need more precision than we've needed in the last couple of classes, I'm going to be using uh, Clip Studio's uh, perspective rulers a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up here. Just a simple two-point perspective. Um, let's see. And we're not, we probably don't need a picture plane. I've, I've been encouraging you guys uh, to, to draw out a picture plane when you, um, you know, just a little, uh, a little bordered area that, that will actually contain your image because your, your vanishing points are usually going to need to go outside. Um, we don't need that today since we're kind of just working with um, little uh, little technical uh, exercises. But, okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to draw a little plane in perspective using this, uh, using this uh, perspective ruler that Clip Studio has. And um, this probably, I'm not sure, uh, but I'm sure that, that there's other uh, tools like this in other uh, art programs. Um, this is what actually drew me to using Clip Studio way back when it was Manga Studio. Um, when I saw that perspective ruler, I was like, oh, I can use that. Um, but anyway, okay, so I'm going to start with this simple, just plane in perspective. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the center of it by using, um, by using an X. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from one corner to the opposite corner. And we're going to draw another line from one corner to the opposite corner. And where do they cross? That's going to be the exact center of this plane in perspective. And that is super, super useful for us to know. Uh, and we're going to be doing this all the time. Like this little X technique, you're going to use everywhere. So what we do from here is project this line through the center back to the, oops, back to the vanishing point. It doesn't necessarily need to come back over here to this side, but may as well. Um, okay, so we've done this X. We've found the center. We've drawn a line through the center back toward the vanishing point. Now what we're going to do is take one more line from one of these corners. It could be the top or the bottom corner. It doesn't really matter. Um, actually, first what I'll do is I'll project these lines back uh, further. And then we're going to take a, a line and we're going to go through the edge where that uh, center line connects. And then where it lands on this bottom line here, that is going to be um, our next like perspective plane. This, this one here is the same as this one here, only it's compressed because of perspective. So we can continue to do that and just project all the way back as far as we want to go. And that's pretty much it. This is a super common technique. I'm not certain that this is the right like standard uh, word to use for it, but I call this projecting. Anytime I'm, I'm, you know, moving stuff around in perspective, I call it like I'm projecting it back and projecting it forward, whatever. Um, okay, so let's do it again on this side. Just make an X. There's the center. Project that center back toward the vanishing point. And then come from that same, you know, front corner, cross right through uh, where, you know, where the, where that center line crosses the edge. And uh, that's it. Super simple. Um, okay. Uh, so this is going to be the basis of so much of the stuff we're going to do. Um, these X's uh, just in, in general. Now I want to point out, um, look at this. You see how that doesn't quite match up? We've got this one here. We've got this one here. So I was a little bit sloppy. Um, 
But these are not super thin lines. They have some thickness to them. So you have to be careful. Let me go ahead and uh, start a new one. You have to be careful where you're um, crossing your lines through. Because like just a, being a little bit off, like if I were to, let me zoom in here. I can come like right from the, whatever I think is the exact center of that corner. But if I'm a little bit off, um, it's going to, whoops, zoom out a little bit. It's going to start to add up to distortion. So um, here, you know, I'll try to come like right from that center because if I get a little bit high or something, it's going to, it's going to get weird. So all right, I see I have one more message in my Discord. Uh, if anybody sent me a private message or anything like that, uh, I'm not getting it because I don't see my Discord right now. You know what? I can I can pull it up on my phone. That's actually uh, okay. Somebody, somebody's in. It, it's definitely in this channel. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, <laughs> that was it. Okay. Um, all right, I'll keep my phone nearby so I can see if I have any other messages. Um, all right, so uh, so watch this. I mean, I have this little setup here, and if I go and I project this line, now I can go right th exactly through the center there, and that's good. Um, but I might also, you know, maybe I'm sloppy and I come like a little bit to the side, or even like, not even like miss it, but just kind of you know, come a little, just, just like a little bit to the side there. And, um, that, that's going to start compounding as I, as you go further back, um, it's going to get less and less accurate. And maybe it doesn't matter that much, you know, um, depending on what you're doing, but I just want to let you guys know that, um, really you want to, when you're using this technique, you want to try to get uh, your lines to go right through the center of, of the uh, points that you're measuring as much as possible because you will start to get distortion. Every It's like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. Every time you, you do it, it's going to get more and more uh, inaccurate. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is a super um, valuable common technique. You're going to use it all the time. You got like a row of buildings or something like that. Um, you got a, a fence with a bunch of fence posts. Um, so you'll use that constantly. Um, another thing you can do, let's start with a, uh, a wider one. Okay. So this is obviously like, uh, maybe this is like a whole wall or something. And then what we can do is, uh, do the same thing. Find that X, find the, find the center with that X, draw this, uh, separate this out, um, create that middle line that runs back to the vanishing point. And then we can subdivide these sections here. Oops. So kind of the same thing, just in reverse, instead of projecting it back, we're, we're starting with a, a bigger surface and subdividing it. Um, now the disadvantage uh, to doing this is that you're kind of stuck with um, even numbers and with uh, kind of splitting it up from, you know, from the center of whatever, whatever that, uh, surface you drew was. Um, I, there are techniques for doing odd numbers, uh, that I, that I actually figured out myself. Um, and I'll show them in another video later on, but, but we're going to skip that for now. Cause we've got a lot of stuff to cover and it's kind of, uh, I don't know if I would say it's advanced, but it's kind of niche. Um, so anyway, this is the basic, you know, X technique for finding the center for duplicating and projecting. And you can use this all the time in a number of different ways. So, um, let me see, let me see. Okay. Uh, all right. 
so now I will show you. Um, let's start again with just a simple. We're going to keep using this same perspective setup because the, the the exact setup of the perspective doesn't matter. We just need something basic. Um, all of these techniques are going to work no matter what our uh, no matter what our perspective setup is. Okay, so say I've got this uh, this box. Um, and what I want to do is I want to create some sort of uh, inset on one of these sides. Um, say I want to put a uh, a box or, or like a um, either I want to like make a cutout here or I want to have a uh, just like maybe like a different colored square in the middle of that box. Or maybe I want to like project something out like this, like something sticking out of the side of that box. And I want to do it accurately. I don't want to just like estimate. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the, uh, use this X technique. And then I'm just going to pick a, a place right there. Looks good. And I'm just going to draw that over to where it hits that other line. And then I'm going to draw that to where it hits that line, draw that to where it hits that line and then come back up. And now we have an accurate inset. Um, of this uh, of this box, um, you know, and you can do the same thing again right there, if you want. Um, I guess if you really wanted to, you could even project outside of this. I don't. I don't know if that would be valuable, um, but you know, you could do it. You could. Let's see. All right. So that one, look at this right here. See how, so I, see how I missed it right there? That's because I got sloppy as I went around. And uh, and we can see, you know, it doesn't look too bad on any, well, that one looks kind of bad. But it doesn't look too bad on most of these, but we, that uh, inaccuracy compounded and we ended up missing the line. Uh, so, you know, be careful with that. But, um, so that right there is a basic, um, just a very basic technique, finding your, uh, finding these like insets. Um, so let me do something else real quick. Uh, I'll show you, I showed you how to uh, project. Let me use a different color here. Let's start to like project a, a little box that comes off this section here. And just use our basic perspective knowledge we should probably understand this stuff by now. So now we got this little box projecting off the side. We could, um, you know, we could get rid of this uh, this stuff back here. So that's pretty simple. Um, no big deal. But if we wanted to then, like, connect these corners to these corners. Now we've got like a bevel. So I can delete this stuff. Delete that. And now we've got like an accurate uh, bevel coming off this side. I'll go over here and I'll do, let's see. I'll do the same thing, but I'll project inward. So we create that X. We create that inset by following this one point around the X. And now, let's see. What I will do is I will create a different color to keep this simple. I need to keep it clear. Um, so when I project back, like I can go back toward the other vanishing point. And then I can go across and I can bring this line and let those connect, you know, find where those connect, um, down, that cross is there, uh, bring that line, should all meet up there. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how we would build like an inset, like a little bay window or something into this box. Um, but if we wanted to do something like this bevel here, but in reverse, let me go ahead and get yet another color. Um, I could connect, 
Let's see. Oh, okay. I could connect these lines here, here. Um, I guess these ones would go here, but they won't be showing. Um, and uh, let's see. Let me just knock all of that back so it can it doesn't get too um, too difficult to to see. And uh, I'll re restate this, and then we would have this line coming back, this line coming back, and uh, now we've got kind of a an interior bevel. Um, much like this exterior one that we've got here. So, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff you can do, um, using these, uh, this, you know, I just call this the X technique. Um, let's see, discord yet? Nope. Still. All right. I'm pretty sure this is not going to go during the course of this class. Um, all right, let me get rid of this. And uh, let's see. So we've learned a little bit about projecting things around, um, using the X technique to make sure uh, we're keeping the proportions uh, accurate. Here, I'm just gonna do a, um, I'm gonna create a picture plane. And we're gonna do one of these ones like we've, oops, like we've been doing um, there's the horizon line right there. I don't let's see. All right, so we got the horizon line, and I'm going to create just a couple of little uh, figures here. Or well, I'll just do one. Generous to call this a figure, but you know, you, you know what I mean. Um, and I showed you guys before about how if we have a bunch of figures standing on the same plane and they're all the same height, then that horizon line is going to pass through their body at the same place. So if I wanted to create another figure that's like closer to the camera, looks like it's about waist height. So this guy would go here. And if we had one here, he'd go like, let's see, back there. But let's say we wanted to be more accurate and we want to, uh, or like we need to figure out, okay, these characters are standing in a line or something. But if I wanted, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. So let's say all these, all these, we got a bunch of characters that are standing in line. Um, so what we would do is project a line back from the top of that character and uh, from the bottom, just project those back toward the vanishing point. And um, we could, we could make a plane and use like the X technique here to. Uh, to make sure that the uh, the spacing is accurate if we wanted to do that, but it's not necessarily necessary. Um, but we will use these like lines here to accurately uh, put this, the characters in this line like into perspective. Um, and let's say that the line turns a corner here. So now we can project this way. Um, and we would start having the characters go this way. And we could even maybe go this way now. And I'll knock, knock that back so it doesn't look too confusing visually. But we could start building these characters out this way. So all of these characters are in like appropriate perspective with each other. And, and we're doing that by just projecting these planes um, all over the place uh, in, this, uh, in this scene. Um, if anybody has any questions on any of this stuff so far, feel free to speak up. Um, I think it's, uh, it's probably pretty straightforward. It may not be necessarily uh, immediately obvious where you're going to use this stuff, um, but you will find places where this uh, 
this comes in handy. Uh, let me go ahead and move that away. And uh, let's see if I can come up with some other example. Um, I don't know. In any case, um, using these just like anytime you have an object, just put kind of like a weird rock or something. And then like a, maybe like a tree over here. Um, and uh, we can just always project a plane from like one thing to the other thing. So we can, now we can like figure out where this, how big this rock is compared to this tree, because we can just project this line back and see, okay, well, like the top of that rock is about at the, uh, you know, a little more than halfway up the trunk of this tree. Um, I don't know why we would need to know that necessarily, but you know, who knows, maybe because we want to have somebody standing over here by the rock and we want to have somebody standing over here by the tree. Um, but in any case, you know, you can always just kind of project stuff around, um, around the, around the, the image, around the plane, um, just by using these basic, uh, I like to think of it like, uh, Tron bikes, you know, and, uh, I'm not sure about, I never saw the, the new Tron movie, but the old one, they had those, they had those little bikes that would create that like wall behind them as they drove and, uh, and they would try to make the other guy run into the wall. And I think of it as just projecting these like Tron bike walls, uh, from place to place. Um, so that's a good technique, something you should know about. Um, let's see. Now I will talk about how to do, uh, circles and perspective. And this is a little bit of an inexact science, but um, it's good to know. It'll help you out a lot. So another thing that's kind of an inexact science is, uh, and when, when I say that, I mean, I guess I mean to me, there, 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 I'm sure there's people out here, out there that understand um, how to do this in a very technical way. Uh, but like I said, when you draw a cube, um, and people will often tend to project it back too far to where it would really look like a, it would really be more like a rectangle or a, um, I guess a rectangle is a 2D shape, not a 3D shape, but you know what I mean? Um, not a perfect cube. Uh, there isn't, as far as I know, a really good, simple way to like, let's say I'm drawing a, a tile floor or something. Um, as far as I know, there isn't a simple way to accurately determine how far back that needs to go. Um, it's actually kind of, uh, it's subjective, like based on, um, to use a camera term based on your like focal length, um, depending on how your zoom or, you know, your lenses are set up on a camera, it's either going to compress or elongate the, um, the depth of the scene. So depending on our, um, quote unquote camera settings, uh, a cube, let's see, or a, a square like on the ground might be, that might be a perfect square or that might be a perfect square or that might be just kind of, you know, this one's, this one's short, this one's kind of medium, this one's kind of long. But it all just depends on what that um, quote unquote focal length is. Uh, the most important thing is to keep it consistent within the image. Um, but uh, you're just going to have to kind of eyeball it. Like I said, um, there might be techniques out there. I'm sure there are techniques out there for, for being mathematical about this. But as far as I'm concerned, like mostly what you're going to do is eyeball it and then just kind of build from there. Um, so, uh, you know, I said I was going to do circles. I'm not going to do circles quite yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, uh, a basic like tile floor. Let's say, so like this is, let's say this is the whole, um, floor area. We're going to do that same old X trick. And we're going to find the center and it's pretty far back there. Um, I think this is, uh, let's see, 
you know what, this is a little too elongated for our purposes right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut it down to like this. Um, so we'll find that X. We'll, we'll create that X. We'll find that center point. And uh, from here, okay, this is getting sloppy. I'm missing the exact center. And like I said, it's important. It's important to go right, right through the center. Otherwise, you're going to start introducing distortion. Um, so you can do this, and then um, you can kind of just subdivide this. Uh, you can just kind of subdivide this. Do do more. Create more little X's here. Um, all right. Now we've got. Now we got this. Now we got this. All right. So now we got a pretty good tile floor. Um, we don't need to put the X's everywhere. We can do like one. Watch. I'll do one here, and now I can. Project that all the way across there. Um, same deal here. Same deal here. And uh, depending on how you do it, you can kind of set up these little um, situations where like, okay, look right there, that one's free. If I wanted to split that, the, that line's already there. This one's already there. Um, so you can kind of split it up as uh, as much as you want. Oops. Um, so there's that. Uh, let's see. We also, if we wanted to do a tile floor, but we don't want to create the whole space, we can also project it out using the same X technique. All right, we'll just get one little tidy X. And um, we can use this to project and just, uh, oops. To use these lines, I have to toggle my uh, snap to perspective ruler off and on, so I mess it up sometimes. Um, so we can just do, you know, the same old trick that we've been doing and just keep projecting uh, so let's see. All right, project a bunch that way. Then we can go up this way. So I'm sure you guys get the idea. Uh, that's like kind of the way you would create a grid. Why one way to create a grid? Um, I really just want to impress on, upon you that these these X's are they're going to be everywhere. They're uh, super useful, super valuable ways of um, you know just determining the center of a plane and and like projecting things around. Um, another thing you can do. Let's say uh, let's say I wanted to draw like a this is not perspective. This will just be like a flat view. Let's say I wanted to draw like a cool like arched doorway or something like this. Um, and I wanted to do that in perspective. So what I could do is I would just create a big, um, like a rectangular plane. And I will, as usual, find the center using the X technique. And then what I can do, let's get a different color. I can kind of freehand it on one side and then I can find the places where this, uh, where it like crosses that line crosses right there. So we know it's going to meet on here on this side. And then, uh, let's see, how would I do this? Um, what I might do is, uh, so I want to find where this particular bit here is going to end up on the other side. So 
what I'll do is I'll draw a line from here, from this uh, center at the bottom to the side here. And, uh, and then I'll do that also on the other side. And then I'll put a line where that crosses right over there. So now I've found where this line is going to cross right there. Um, and maybe, let's see. So we know that there's this curve that goes through here, but like there's a little, the way I drew it, there's like a little bit of a sharper turn right there and I want to make sure I capture that. So what I'm going to do, I've already got this, uh, this line here. I'm going to put a line and this is all kind of subjective. Like you can kind of figure out, you know, depending on your application, you're going to, there's going to be different, um, places where you're going to put the lines. But what I'm going to do is just take a line from here and bring it down to that line there. And now that gives us, oh, and then I'm going to do, do the same thing on the other side from that corner to there. And now that gives us, if we try to just kind of project that across, that gives us where this line um, ends up on the other side. So we got, I guess, four points right here, or five, six, depending on how you count it. Um, we got the top, we got that one, we got that one, that one, that one, and then down here. So I'm going to take this and uh, I'm going to project to right there to right there. Uh, I did not find this one. So let me see. Uh, I made a mistake there. Um, where do I want to go? Hmm. I guess what I would do here, maybe go from here through there. It ends up right here on the side. So now I will just project that line across and then bring another line down to the center there. Uh, so now we found, we got it right there and then we got it right there. So bring that line through there, through that one over there and then down to the bottom. Um, so that seems pretty complicated. Uh, a lot of times you don't need to really measure all this stuff out. You can just freehand it. Um, that depends a certain amount on your experience. Um, but, um, you know, this technique is always available. You can always kind of just create your crossing lines, um, figure out what goes to where, project it across to the other side, and create kind of a little map for yourself to... Um, to uh, you know, figure out where everything is going to be. Um, okay, so now we'll go ahead and do uh, circles in perspective, which is tough. Um, but, you know, it's it's surmountable. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say we need to draw, if we're doing a circle, we need to be, we need to draw a perfect square. And like I already said, it's a little bit subjective what a perfect square is, but um, do your best. To me, that looks pretty good. That looks like it's about right as a square in perspective. Um, so once again, we'll do the X, basic stuff. Let's do these, uh, do a plus as well. And now we've got this separated into four nice cubes with a line through them. Put these uh, additional, whoops, additional lines here. Now we're going to have four nice little X's. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a perfect circle in perspective. Um, and I'm going to transform it into... Uh, into like this, um, this is super simple. And this is not, this is not the trick. This is, this is a cheat. Um, it's a, t it's a good cheat. It works well. You, just, you might use this sort of thing a lot. Um, but we want to learn how to do it without, uh, these tools if necessary, but I'm just going to show you like how the circle fits into that, uh, into that box. Um, so 
that should be pretty good. Um, so what we see is uh, the edge of the circle um, on these corners, it hits about, I would say this is about a two to three uh, proportion, about two lengths in here and three lengths out there. And so if we're gonna freehand a circle, let me get this, get rid of this. Let's see, we'll just go about, estimate about two, two to two thirds, or not two thirds, um, two, two to three ratio. Estimate about right there, estimate about right there, estimate about right there. And now we're just going to draw through that. And this is not the most beautiful circle in the world, but you know, it's close enough. Um, let me see. Let me get a different color on that real quick. Whoops. There we go. And then let's, uh, yeah, that's not a great circle. Um, <clears throat> drawing circles in perspective like this is not easy. You might want to check it with some sort of a um, template or something. Um, what I'm actually going to do right now is bring this uh, other circle back here so you can see. All right, so it's a little off, but not uh, not too bad. Um, so anyway, that's uh, basically how you can draw a circle. Um, I guess I should cover, uh, we've covered this a little bit in the past, but um, you should know that if you're doing a, uh, a circle or an ellipse uh, oops, in perspective, um, the, uh, all right, so, Oops. All right, so an ellipse um, has a, what's called the major axis, which is through the longest, uh, you know, angle. And it's got the minor axis, which is through the like shortest angle. And um, when you're doing a, a circle or ellipse in perspective, the um, center of that circle is always going to, um, if you draw a line through the center back to the vanishing point, it's always going to go straight through the minor axis. So like, I'll just sketch one here and let's say the vanishing point is down here. Um, so the vanishing point should go straight through uh, the minor axis like this. Um, if I don't do it like that. I put the vanishing point like that. So now it's, it's like, it's not going straight through that uh, minor axis there. It's it's tilted, and then if I you know bring this stuff back to the vanishing point wherever I put that, I should put it back there. Um, and this is going to give us the appearance of a uh, tilted uh, ellipse at the end of this um, cylinder. It's going to look like a hypodermic needle or something like that. So always make sure that the center um, that a line from the from the vanishing point through the center of the circle or of the ellipse rather um, is going straight through the minor axis. Um, all right, check my notes, see what else we got. Um, yeah, I guess that's, uh, that's most of it. Um, let me think if there's anything else that I need to cover. I can cover more in uh, additional videos, um, but I think with uh, the two videos we did before, the horizon line and linear perspective, plus the tricks um, and techniques that I'm showing you here, you guys should be in pretty good shape to uh, continue uh, or to, um, you know, to get going with perspective. And there's 
more complicated tricks and stuff that I will probably show uh, in videos later on. Um, if anybody has any uh, questions, um, any particular questions you have about perspective that I haven't covered, anything like that, um, go ahead and ask. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Well, let me, uh, let me, let me try something and, uh, we'll see. Um, I'll just use this same little perspective setup that we've been doing. Okay. And you said telephone poles. Whoops. Oh, I see what's up. My whole layer is the wrong color. Okay. So we've got a telephone pole. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Let's try that. Let's, um, let's just arbitrarily place another one like right there. Okay. We'll do the X technique. We'll find the center. We'll project that back. And again, I'm having trouble getting on the exact center, but it's, it's worth it to take another second or two and make sure you're right on the right center. Um, of that line because it will introduce distortion. Um, all right, so we'll go through find that, that one and we'll just go ahead and do this whole thing and we'll see what happens and see if it does look weird. Um, I'm not sure I've heard that myself, Kana. Uh, I would be interested to see um, where they're saying that because uh, I I could be, you know, that, that could be very accurate. Um, and there are definitely um, there are definitely places where it helps to cheat your perspective. Um, I have a book called uh, I think it's called Creative Perspective. Um, that's kind of all about cheating perspective in ways that like might actually look better. Um, but let's go ahead and keep just like chasing this down and uh, see what happens. Okay, some of these I'm forgetting. You feel like that doesn't look accurate? Yeah, I don't know. So you think, you feel, or, you know, what, what you've seen is that it, it helps to start spacing them out a little bit more? Okay. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Um, I, I can't really speak to that. Uh, I'm sure, you know, whoever whoever said that probably knew what they were talking about. They probably got... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm I going to have to go with I don't know on that one. Um, if if there, if it is the case, I, I would be interested to see if there is a, like, uh, technical sort of... Um, way to space it out more so it looks right or if you just have to kind of eyeball it or what um but uh yeah i would say uh experiment with that see what works for you um i'm real curious now i'm gonna if you if you happen to know uh where you saw that you can like let me know after or something uh because i would like to see that um but uh yeah i mean i guess um i will say that i know that there are Situations in which it is to your advantage to cheat your perspective in some way, and that very well may be one of them, but I can't really speak to it um, specifically. Uh, but yeah, thanks for that question, Kana. Anybody else have any more questions? Any Anything you want to know about perspective? Anything you've been wondering out about that I haven't covered? Doesn't seem, doesn't seem like it. Okay. Um, well, guys, uh, I think that about covers it for what I have prepared for today. You know, I do have some other stuff. Um, I guess I do have some other stuff I can teach with perspective. Um, but uh, that's about everything I have planned for today. So um, that will be about it for the uh, final 
uh, live uh, comics class. And uh, going forward, I'll, I'll be um, continuing to post videos, uh, you know, shorter ones, hopefully more frequently. I mean, like, it would be nice to, to get, you know, maybe two or three out a week or something like that. Um, but we'll see. Uh, so, uh, I guess, uh, for homework, one final homework, um, just, uh, you know, I, I don't have a specific, um, number of these to do or anything. Just show me like putting some of this stuff into practice. Uh, show me some of these, uh, you know, projecting back, show me, you understand the various ways that you can use this X technique. Um, draw me some tile floors, maybe, uh, some fences, some telephone poles, um, show me, uh, projecting some figures around in a plane using that, uh, the technique we showed of like the, the Tron bike technique, um, et cetera. Just, just practice with this, um, insets, insets using, you know, like we, like we said, this kind of like inset, um, if you want to, if you want to do some bevels or something like that, um, that's one more one. I, I just came up with one more thing I want to show, uh, get rid of all of this. Um, and we'll do a pyramid real quick because this is actually a cool, uh, application. Okay. So we got a square surface on the ground. Let's get that X, find the center, center, project that straight up and to, to wherever we want the height of our pyramid to be. Um, and then I'll just, what I'll do is I'll preemptively like knock this stuff out and we can just connect. Let me see. All right. Yeah, we can just connect the, the corners to that top. And, uh, you know, there's a pyramid. Um, or, well, let's see, let's, let me not get rid of that stuff. Um, same difference. Project all of these uh, corners. I'm getting a little sloppy here. Um, and we could even, like, do this. Do something like this. Oh, man. That got real sloppy, and it's not connecting up. Okay, so we could even have like a pyramid with a flat top, something like that. Anyway, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. Uh, this sort of X technique underlies a huge amount of what you're going to be doing in perspective. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, I guess that'll be it, guys. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, for coming, and um, I'll see you in uh, further videos. All right. Thank you. Take care.